Okay, class. Um, I am testing out a new, um, some new software called Camtasia. Uh, this is a recap of what we talked about in class today. So if uh, if I went too quickly and uh, you didn't understand it, then you can uh, watch this at home, and you can pause it whenever you're unclear, and you can rewind and watch it again. Uh, this was the introduction to our um, lesson today. These were the things that we were going to learn. Uh, the big idea in this lesson is that when a relation is represented by a table with consecutive input numbers, a pattern can be observed in the output numbers. And as we first learned here, this doesn't make a lot of sense, the introductory just yet. Uh, hopefully by the end of the class it did become clear. Uh, when a relation is represented as a table of values, we can write the relation using algebra. Uh, Mini-me was a little bit confused, so... We uh, started in, and this was our input-output table. And the first one that we did was relatively straightforward. Um, as the input numbers are going up by 1, you will see that the output numbers are going up by 5. So the question here was, uh, how did we get from each input number to the output number? And we needed to represent it with an algebraic expression. Um, we discovered that to get from each input to the output, we had to multiply by 5. Uh, pretty straightforward. If I were to continue down with the input numbers, if I continued going lower and lower, say this wasn't a 5, but this was a 20, okay, uh, it'd be difficult and a waste of time just to keep counting up by 5, so we have to find out how we got from each input to output. Uh, the question was, can you write an algebraic expression if input equals n? And we discovered that for each input number, if we put the input number in the place of n, we would get our output number. So by here putting 1 in the place of n here, 1 times 5, which would give us 5. Mathematicians like the shortcut, we write it as 5n. So that was relatively easy but it became a little bit more problematic when we were going from input to output when each time it looked like it was something a little bit different. We can't multiply the input by just one number to get to the output, so this kind of indicates that there are two steps involved. In this one, I kind of tricked you. Um, instead of putting the 5 here, if this were 5, obviously the output would just continue up by 2 to make it 11. Um, and we talked about not writing out what 5 would be, what 6 would be, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc., all the way up to 20. That would be a waste of time. So the same thing here, we need to try to find out how we got from input to output. And you might have recalled to do this, um, the answer here was 2n plus 1. So if we took the n here and we put 1 in the place of n, that became 2 times 1 plus 1 equals 3. If I put 2 in the place of n, that became 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 gave you 5. So many of us recognize this. Uh, there were still quite a handful of us that didn't quite see the pattern. So we tried to make things a little bit simpler. Here again is the input-output table. This is a different expression that's represented. And again, I put down a 20 here just to kind of um, make life a little bit more difficult. And to get from the input to the output, we notice we can't multiply each input by a certain number to give us the answer. Um, here, if we multiply 2 times 2, we get 4. But if you multiply 3 times 2, you don't get 7. So again, it indicates that it's a two-step rule. And we need to figure out what that question mark was at the bottom. So I can show you the answer here, and I'm going to slow things right down. Um, again, if you put uh, the input number in the place of n, this first line, 3 times 1, which is 3, minus 2, equals 1. That gives you the output. Let's test it for 2. If you put 2 in the place of n, it becomes 3 times 2 is 6, minus 2 is 4. So that's correct. So if we jump down to the 20 here, we put 20 in the place of n, that becomes 3 times 20 is 60, 
minus 2 is 58. So in a quiz situation, if I asked you what this was, the answer would be 58. So the question becomes, how do you teach this? You either recognize it right away, or you don't. It is a case of trial and error, although we found upon taking further investigation, there is some method to it. So how did we find out the answer? How did we find the expression of 3n minus 2? So we figured out on each output, if we go down from one level to the next, we're always adding 3. We add 3 again. 7 plus 3 is 10. So when that happens, when the output table goes up by 3 each time, the expression for the output must contain 3n. So you're going to be doing multiplication by 3, but obviously here you're not just multiplying by 3, there's another step involved. And many of me thought this was revolutionary. So moving on, when you multiply each input number by 3, you're always going to get two more than the output number. And this is what we showed in class here. So uh, we recognize it's going to be 3n, so 1 times 3 equals 3, and 3 is 2 more than the 1. So we do the same with the 2. 2 times 3 is 6, that was 2 more than the output number. We continue going on, 3 times 3 is 9, which is 2 more than 7. 4 times 3 is 12, which is 2 more than 10. So what do we do now? We have to subtract 2 to get to the output. So remember it was 3n minus 2 is the expression. So in this case, if we asked you what the answer was here, we just placed for 20, we put 20 in the place of n, that became 3 times 20 is 60, minus 2 is 58. Our last one, just to kind of solidify what we learned, this was a different table. And again, we know that there's going to be two steps involved, because you can't directly multiply one of these input numbers to reach the output number. There's obviously a second step. So if we go through the steps that we just did, what's the expression? Well, the output is always going up by what? By 4. We add another 4, okay, each time to the output number. So this will indicate that within the expression, there's going to be uh, each input number is multiplied by 4, which will give us 4n going through the same. Oh, thank you, Minimi, this is making sense. Next here, if you multiply simply just that, every time you multiply the input number, you're always three more than the output. Two times four is eight, which is three more than five. Three times four is 12, which is three more than nine. Four times four is 16, which is three more than 13. So therefore, we have to subtract three in that expression as well to get to the output. So we investigated it became 4n minus 3. And you can double check these. You can verify the solution by putting each input number in the place of n and making sure you get the output number. So in this case, let's double check. We put 20 in the place of n. So that becomes 4 times 20 equals 80. Minus 3 is 77. That should be the answer. There we are. OK, hopefully this helps, guys. Uh, the textbook obviously will further explain what I've said on here. Good luck with the homework.